Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll make the case for using the MVVM pattern, and I'll show you how to take an ordinary Blazor form and turn it MVVM. Now, MVVM is a big topic, but I want to start slow. So today I'm going to explain the reasons why you'd want to use the model view view model pattern in Blazor in the first place, and then I'll show you how easy it is to do MVVM in Blazor. And that's all happening right now, right here on Blazor Train. All right. Before I get started in showing you how to do MVVM in Blazor, I want to talk about why. Why? 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 Why you would want to do MVVM in the first place. All right. So first of all, let's dissect this term, MVVM. It means three things, model, view, and view model. So the model in this case might be customer. Right? You have a pure data model. And what a lot of us have done over the years is added all sorts of methods and things to those models. And then we've tried to persist those models to databases. Now we have to tell the serializer, hey, ignore this, ignore this, ignore that. The whole idea in MVVM is you want your models to be pure. You want them to go back and forth via an API to a data store. And they should have no logic in them. They should only be data objects, okay? The view at the same time should be just markup, right? No code behind, no code behind buttons, like we got into that problem with Windows Forms, right? Button click handler, put all the code there, and I've been guilty of it up to this point in Blazor Train in doing everything in a code block, okay? Just for demo purposes, it's very easy to show. But in the real world, you want to have one view model per view. A view would be a page or a component, right, that has UI in there. So everything, all the code needed to support that view, that UI, goes in a corresponding view model, all right? So think of it as code behind on steroids. And the difference between a view model and just a regular class with, that has a code behind is that there's no tight coupling, right? We don't have a tight link, it's abstract. And we're gonna use interfaces for that. Now, now that we know what those pieces are, why would you wanna go the extra mile to creating a view model when you can do it the easy way? Why? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. You want to completely separate the view from the models that support that view, right? because you might want to change the view or change the model, and you don't want those changes to impact one another. So you might want to add properties to a model. You might want to remove properties from that model. But the whole idea is that the view model is going to present whatever data the view needs, and the view model is where those changes happen. The view doesn't have to change. That's the idea. So with that, let me create for you a simple application that does some CRUD stuff in memory, and then we'll take all that code behind and move it into a view model and we'll MVVMify it. That's not a word. It is now. No, it's not. Get your own show. All right. So without any further ado, I've created MVVM test. This is just a Blazor server application. It's written in .NET Core 3.1. And I'm going to add a models folder to it. And to that, we're going to add a customer model. All right, it's very simple. We have an ID, a first name, and a last name. That's it. Now, all I'm going to do is modify our index page to do just sort of a standard CRUD demo, okay? So we got some markup here, and we got some code down here. Now it doesn't know where customer is because we haven't added our models folder to our list of using statements, so let's do that now. There it is. 
So I've got a list of customers and I've got this as a property with a unique getter. And the reason is because I want to filter. Well, you know what? Let's, let me just run it and I'll show you what this thing does and then you can figure out what all these things are after. All right, so we've got three customers, Isadora Jar, Ben Slacken, and Mike Easter. Now this is what I was telling you about the search. It does in real time, if I just do like R, now only those customers that have an R in them show up. If I do A, they all show up. A, R, not just that. Uh, just Isadora Jar shows up. Okay, so this is just a way to filter. Now I've showed you this before. So let's do an update. I select Ben Slacken. Now I have this little table down here and I can change any one of these fields and hit update. Customer was updated, a little info message there. And of course it updates here. Now I can create a new customer. And I add that customer to the list. There it is, it shows up, no problem. Now I can delete the current customer. All right, so your basic CRUD, no big whoop there. So in the code, you can see I have my info message, my error message, my search term, those are strings. I have a Boolean adding, which I set to true when I add a customer, just so I know what to do. I have my customer selected event, which handles the on change of my select. So anytime I select a customer in the list, this happens. I set the selected customer, which is a property, to uh, that customer. I pull it out of my customer's list. I have a new customer where I'm setting the selected customer to a new customer and set setting adding to true. I have an update selected customer. I have an add customer. I have a delete selected customer. And uh, that's about all the code that's there. Now everything else is bound to that code, right? So here we have my search term and I'm using bind colon event on input so that every key press update search term. I've got my select, which is essentially a list box and on change calls customer selected. And then I'm looping through my list of customers, which I'm calling the actual property getter so that I can filter that. And if this cust right here in the loop is the selected customer, selected customer is not null, then I'm using my selected attribute on the option, otherwise I am not. Otherwise everything's the same there. Here's my new customer button that calls new customer. And now selected customer is not null, which means I've selected one. I've got this table that shows and binds to the first name, the last name, and then if we're adding, I show the add customer button. And if not, then we're editing. So I have an update customer button and a delete customer button. Then I have my two messages, an info message, which is blue, and an error message, which is red. Simple, simple, simple. All right, now, at this point, I've saved this as a separate project. And if you go to blazertrain.com, go to this episode 24, download the materials, as you can do with all of the shows, you will get a zip file that has both the completed version of MVVM test and a version that's at this point right now. So if you want to mess around with it, create your own view model, all that stuff, go ahead. But now I'm going to go on and we're going to MVVMify this project. So let's do that now. I'm going to add a new folder called view models. Now in view models, I'm going to first create an interface for my customer view model, and then we'll create a class that implements that interface. So the interface is I customer view model. There it is right there. And you shouldn't be surprised to see all of the fields and all of the things and methods that we have in the code behind or in the code block right here in the view model. That's a great place to start. So I have my info message, my error message, my search term adding. We have avoid new customer. Uh, customers that just is a get, but it's a property. 
and then selected customer, which is a property. I have my customer selected. Now these are all tasks. These are all things that get called through binding with the UI. Customer selected, get customer I don't actually use in this demo, but I have an add, update, and delete. So these are gonna be async. I always make them async, even if I'm not doing async stuff because that makes it easier later when I do need to do async stuff. Note you do not use the async keyword in the interface. All right, so to my view models folder now, I will add that customer view model. And here it is. So we're implementing I customer view model. Now you would use an API manager in the view model, obviously for CRUD operations. And that's another reason why I have these as async. And you can notice here that this little line of code right there just appeases the compiler and because I'm doing something asynchronously, I'm waiting for zero milliseconds, but it's async and that's a nice little hack. So in my initialized view model gets called in the constructor, uh, but this is where you would use injection, dependency injection to put anything in here that you might want. But I like to pull the initialized view model out into a separate method because I might want to call it distinctively separately in another place. So anyway, all of these things are exactly the same as before. Customer selected, new customer, get customer ID. All I'm doing is uh, changing values and properties on the view model. That's all I'm doing in here, okay? Now let's implement this in a page. Now rather than just munge our index page, I'm gonna leave that as is and I'll add a new page called MVVM page. Now the MVVM page is going to use a injected view model. Now we can't inject this because we haven't created a service yet. So let's go to startup and add this as a scoped service. There it is. While we're at it, let's add our view models folder as a using statement to imports. Now let's go back to our MVVM page. Now you can see I've injected that in here. And just to make sure we know we're here, I'm just gonna say MVVM. All right, I've injected an iCustomer view model. This is really important because we don't want tight coupling here. This abstracts away the implementation of iCustomer view model so that the view only uses that interface. But look, Ma, no code. No code behind, no code block. It's all here in this view model service. So all the code is exactly the same except everything's been prefixed with customer VM. Everything's on the, ver on the view model. That's it. Everything's in there. So what we're left is a pure view a pure model customer and a view model, customer view model that does everything that this view does UI wise. But here I can bring in any models or call any APIs or do whatever I need to do to support that view. And it's completely separate, it's completely abstract. I can change the model, I can change the view and everybody's happy. Let's run it and we'll go to MVVM page. There it is, we know we're here. Let's search RA. There it is, Isadora, A, E, N, Ben Slacken, search works. It's really filter, isn't it? So let's update and that works, customer updated. Let's add a new customer. There's big dude added. Let's delete Ben Slack in. Everything works exactly as it did before. Pure view, pure model, everything else in the view model. Back to you in the studio, Carl. So now you know why MVV. Why? 
So now most of you know why MVVM is a good idea, and you know how to implement view models in Blazor. And next week we're going to dive a little deeper by combining MVVM with persistent app state. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train.